Uh, to make matters worse for FTX and its stakeholders, news startup Semaphore reporting that uh, the hours between Binance's offer and withdrawal, much of FTX's legal and compliance staff uh, quit, um, including, by the way, the general counsel. Uh, Join us right now, the journalist who reported those resignations, Liz Hoffman, a business and finance editor at Semaphore. We should also mention the FTX founder and CEO, Sam Bankman Fried, is one of Semaphore's multiple investors to make things. Uh, I, I can only hope, Liz, that uh, he put up his money um, already. But, Liz, nice to see you. Good to be here. And, and yeah, thank you for acknowledging that up front. Uh, we've certainly had uh, a couple of comments about that, but uh, we are a fiat enterprise at, at Semaphore, so uh, we did get the investment in cash. Uh, nice. Uh, let's talk about sort of the state of play. What do you think is really happening here? I think you don't have to really understand or even care that much about crypto to understand and care about what happened here, which is that it was a run on the bank. You know, there's, I think crypto pioneers over the last decade have talked a big game about kind of, you know, achieving escape velocity from the financial system, but they haven't. And, you know, there's really one surefire way to get yourself in trouble on Wall Street, you know, over decades and centuries, and it's to have your assets not match your liabilities, to run out of money. And that's basically what happened here. What do you think the liability is at this point? I mean, I think there's, there's real questions about, A, a bankruptcy, and B, whether there's even, uh, you know, as we've talked about, potential criminality. Uh, Department of Justice looking at this, this idea of commingling of funds. Yeah, look, what we reported on Tuesday, you know, it started out as a billion dollar ask. Hard to say whether that was actually the size of the hole or that's sort of just what you ask for when you're in trouble. You know, by midday it was five or six. I think, you know, latest reports I've heard, I think the Wall Street Journal reported last night, looking more like seven or eight billion dollars. And, you know, to put that in context, the biggest bank failure in U.S. history was Washington Mutual in 2008. And they lost 15, 16, 17 billion dollars in deposits in like a week and a half. Um so this is huge and, and I think, frankly, probably existential. It's, you know, it's past a liquidity problem. It's, I think, really into solvency territory here. And, and frankly, I don't know why anyone would step in, right? Like, to your right. point, Binance looked at this and said, no, thank you. And the truth is, you know, to the extent that FTX's customers, you know, are not completely scarred by this and want to stay in crypto, they're going to go to the, the last, you know, man standing, you know, Binance for Coinbase. Well, let's talk about that. <laughs> the last man standing would be Binance. And the yeah. question is, if if enough people decided that they wanted out of Binance, do they have the liquidity? Meaning, is, is the whole thing quicksand or is there something that's actually under undergirding all of this? As always, it's a confidence. It's a confidence game. And there's a reason that, you know, for example, airlines don't compete on safety. Right. Like, God forbid, a United plane crashes. It's not a good day for Delta. People stop flying. And, you know, Andrew, you'll remember this better than me. But in 2008, Certainly, there were traders on the on the floor across Wall Street who were cheering when when Lehman went down. But their bosses told them to knock it off very quickly. And you know, you saw CZ, uh, you know, tell tell Binance, "This is not a good day for us or for the industry. Like, keep your mouth shut, put your heads down." Um, I think it could very well be existential for the industry. The flip argument is that you know, for as much as we've been talking about it for the last you know five or ten years, crypto is still very much in its sort of early years, maybe it's adolescence. And um, that's when a lot of this stuff happens and, and the sort of shenanigans get washed out and, and serious players, you know, remain and professionalize the, the asset class. And, and how would you gamble on that? If we're, we were in a crypto winter, someone last night said to me, well, we might be going into an ice age. Yeah, I, I look, if I, if I was a prognosticator on the market, I, I'd be in a different business. But you know, I do think, you know, the the comparison actually to, to 2001 is an interesting one because, right, a lot of people lost money, but sort of the frenzy around the dot-com bubble, you know, was the investment that was made, for example, in, in broadband and, and fiber optic, you know, all of that money that was spent to lay the rails really, like, enabled the next, you know, the next chapter in the economy, the, the sort of digital decade or two that we're in. So, you know, I think at the for the moment, I think, you know, Becky was saying earlier, like, you know, crypto sort of by definition was kind of a parallel financial system. I don't right. really see where this is plugged into the broader economy. Some people will lose money, but, you know, kind of by definition, it was it was a, a world apart. Um, and, and so I really don't think this is systemic for, for the broader economy.